Welcome again to another edition of the Motley Croc Show. It is now 8 o'clock Thursday. What do we have here? It is Thursday the 11th. We are flying through time. We're going to do a little bit of talking about. We're going to have some really fun stuff we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to talk about the Ma Barker House because we are visiting there coming up next week. Brady's going to talk a little bit about Crystal Skulls. I'm sure Jeff will have some great topics. So we're going to be like really having some fun this evening. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody come in and hang out with us. So I'm going to go ahead and bring in the crazy manic satanic. Jeff, what's up? What's up, how you doing, bud? I'm doing good. We are excited, man. There's some cool stuff coming we're going to get to do this week. Hopefully, we can get some pop-ins. Um, Ant did say he would stop in tonight if he could. Nice. He's very busy, so you know how that goes. It can be oh, yeah. pretty crazy at times. I definitely know how that goes. You know, today's storm was pretty weird, too, right? We had, like, this crazy, like, storm, and then went to sunny, beautiful weather. Only in Florida, I would say. Yeah, it was uh, it was pouring out up here, and... Um... Uh, my driveway flooded and a little bit got into my snake room, but only a couple feet, so it didn't reach the animals. But, Which is nice. Uh, they probably like that lakefront property. Oh, there you go. It's perfect, right? The price goes up. I mean, that's what I would think. I would definitely think so. I, I wish I had some. <laughs> oh, but, me too. Uh, well, you did today for a little bit of time. Yeah, definitely. I stepped out my door, and it was like six inches of water in my driveway all the way up to my front door. I have to dig it out a little bit, see if I can get it to drain a little bit better. You're like, maybe, just maybe, I'll start breeding turtles in here. There Never you go. Time. Perfect. And it dries out. My front yard turtle pond would be perfect. Wouldn't that be great? That'd be wonderful. What's up, Holly? How you doing? Hey, Holly. Um, yeah, no, it'd be if I could do it naturally like that, I'd be all over it. I um, uh, I started pulling eggs this week. I had a bunch of, bunch of nice clutches, so I was kind of psyched about that. Season, the happiest time of the year is underway for me. Breeding season. Yeah, good best. people coming in. Awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's going to be pretty good, man. Breeding season is one of those awesome times of year for everybody. What's up, Judy? How are you? Yeah, um, I, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. How many babies do you think you're going to have this year? I think people uh, would be interested I'm, in that. My goal is at least 200 this year. Um, last year fell really short. I think we got like 80, just under 80. Um, the year before we did o- over three, so I'm hoping to meet somewhere in the middle. I have a lot of lot of gravid girls. Almost everyone's in shed right now, or in the lay box. So, you know, I have a few I'm waiting on any day now. Some really <laughs> cool stuff, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty That's psyched awesome. about it, man. I'm, I'm glad you know the world didn't end uh, from the eclipse because that would have sucked. After I got some nice eggs. Yo, I mean, like I sent we we I sent you that guy's that stuff today. That one girl that like stabbed her partner and then killed her kids or whatever. Yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fucked up, right? What a weird thing to be like. I mean, yeah, I don't think the effect yeah. had that much on anybody in Florida. It just looked like a bird flew in front of the sun or something. Yeah, I I worked that night. I picked up some overtime, and I was like, you know, I kind of expected the end of the world to be uh, not so anticlimactic. <laughs> living the dream my dude's been in the middle of nowhere in south australia for almost two months well hey that's awesome i saw a video that you put up uh, uh, uh holly and it looked really cool with all the uh look like wool or something i think if that's what it was please correct me if i'm wrong but i think it was wool what's up seth how you living bud hey, seth. No, 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 no. Shh. you too <laughs> captain how are you but um we just we want to say hi to captain too man we got to say hello to captain but we went back to a really good um Set of weather afterwards. It got out, it got pretty good. I was pretty yeah. interested in it, and um, we wouldn't be a show without animals, uh, Jeff. If uh, we didn't have animals barking yeah. in the background, you know, he doesn't like when people uh, when people uh, walk on his street. He's very particular about it. Dang, I'm gonna go shut him up. Sounds good. Oh, so Holly, that's cool. She said, "Yeah, we're in the woods or in the wool shed." That's cool, man. That's cool. Hey. Whatever works out there. Any big crocodiles in that area? Any cool reptiles you can tell us about? Type it in the box. Let me know. Um, yeah, so for those of you still popping in and talking to us, Brittany's going to talk a little bit about Crystal Skulls. There was a movie, I think, um, Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skulls, I think, was one of the things she was going to talk about tonight. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, – I'm going to have her kind of touch on um, the uh, Ma Barker house and how things went in that you know whole thing again just for everybody because we are going there. We're going to be going there. What's up, Michael? How you doing, bud? Hey, we're going to be- to the mob barker house on the 18th um we're still getting all that stuff worked out um as far as times and allowances and so on and so forth so you know it's it's one of those things it's owned by the county so there's all kinds of uh things you have to do but other than that that's pretty cool and we'll, we'll definitely be uh grabbing on that pretty soon man so it's going to be a pretty pretty big 
big event, I think. And, and we'll be live from there. And I know that some people keep asking about it. And I'm like, yeah, we're going to do it for sure. Um, there's going to be some dark out times when um, we put Ant in a room by himself and run a camera on him. And we're going to blind him and make sure he can't hear. So it's complete deprivation. That really kind of helps a lot. No, I got enough, but I'm saving for a trip to Florida. Hopefully be there for Crockfest if it's on. I'm not sure how it works. That's it's awesome. on. Crockfest is going to be, I think... At Zoo Tampa again, am I, am I correct? Um, uh, was the, I think it's Zoo Tampa. It be Zoo Tampa again. I think it's Zoo Tampa. I think it's Zoo Tampa. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. You'd probably know better than me at this point. I think so. I, I could be wrong, guys, so I'm not going to say 100%, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be in, in, I believe, is yep. it? Pull the dates June up. 29th. What's the date? June 29th, correct? Yeah, Zoo Tampa, yeah. I will not be here. I will be out of town. But I will be there in spirit, thinking about everybody and and um and their 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 crockmanship. <laughs> yeah, I'll probably be there. Maybe it's, we'll see. See if uh you know if I'm not working or something else. I've been a lot of overtime oh, lately, so I've been picking that up where I can and you know good making that extra. Good. I think Brittany's trying to come in. I think so. Let me see if we can pop her in. She was having some trouble, but let's bring her in because I really want to pick her brain because we're just kind of boring compared to the famous. The famous Brittany B. And Hi. There she she's is. there, but she's kind of frozen. It's really terrible, Brittany. I know. The whole system on my end is really jacked tonight. Well, yeah, probably the same. How could you jack up the system on a night we need you to be there? I know. I'm so sorry. Have you tried, um? just for a quick reference, have you tried hot spotting your laptop to your phone? I, have, I did that before this and I wouldn't even sign in. So then I went back to my Wi Fi. Well, your Wi Fi has got awful. I'm sorry, folks. It's a uh, we got we're getting a full house here, and we have Brittany with terrible, <laughs> terrible signal. That's not good. No, I know. Hi, Holly. I know I reset everything. I it's been awful just from the storm, knocked out a bunch of crap up here today, and I, it's bad. Well, that's not good at all because that's going to be terrible because I need a lot of information from you today. Oh, okay. Yeah, I really stuff. need you to talk. We're talking talk a little bit about the crystal skulls. I want some insight on the crystal skulls mm -hmm. because I always thought it was kind of a spoof or it was a bunch of people made them and just left them away and everybody's trying to say something else. And I really want to know what your... Um, or they come full of liquor. Yeah, that too. <laughs> um, so that. Thank you, Dan Aykroyd. Appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> a little plug for Dan for his company, Crystal Skull Company. There you go. <laughs> no, the, the crystal skulls go back. The first one was discovered in the 1800s and it was actually turned over to the Smithsonian. Um, William, I don't remember his last name. We're losing Is viewers. Really Brittany, viewers are dropping off because of your terribleness. <laughs> I'm sorry. They're like, fuck this. We're not going to watch this crap. What's up, Sean? How you doing, bud? I'm sorry. Hi, Brittany, I'm going to boot you, and I want you to come back in. Okay. We are going to bring Brittany back in and really try to get her to reconnect. Because she might have just, sometimes you got to grab a new Wi-Fi out there. You know, if they're wires, the Wi-Fi will jump from a couple different bands. Sometimes you can get it. Sometimes you can't. I just definitely want to bring her in, because I really want to talk about that, Jeff. I, I'm down with Crystal Skulls, man. I don't know a whole lot about them. Um, you know, I've I don't either, but Brittany had brought it up, and, and she had read some things about people who did some research on there. And um, what's up, beginners? And, um, you know, they did a movie, um, The Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skulls, which probably wasn't one of the better ones, but no, the story was very interesting, better. you know? Yeah. I mean, everybody bitch, but one of my favorites was The Temple of Doom, and I'll tell you why. I love The Temple of Doom. That was like the worst one they said, but I'll tell you why I liked it, because I liked the guy, dude. He like, I was just going to say. You're a kid, wow. and he, wow. gr he grabs the heart out, like, boom, boom. Not just boom, beating boom, heart boom. out, dude. You can't beat yeah. that. 100%. 100%. <laughs> And I think that um, that was one of the things. What's up, Bill? And I think that that's one of the uh, coolest parts. You know, the runner ray cart and all that stuff in the caves and all that. It was yeah, definitely. I thought it was done pretty good, but people didn't like it. I, I used to like the Indiana Jones ride at um, at uh, Universal. Remember oh that? yeah, I think they still kind of do something like that. I think yeah, it's a different ride, but it's the same ride. I think yeah, it's kind of like they. Right. Now yeah. I think it's kind of a show, if I'm not mistaken. It's a little bit more of a show. And and looking at how Brittany's coming in right now in the background, it's like might be better, it might not, but we'll see. A little bit, little bit. Say something. 
Is that better now? You're you. We can hear you, but you're frozen, like you're looking at a gravestone. Ugh. Oh, now you got a half smile. You're good. Now you're like, there it is. <laughs> I'm so done with this. Oh my service. god! I don't know. It like happened after the storm. Like all of our, we reset our router, and all of our apps not working in the house on the TV. My phone is like lagging when I go to turn on something. Like it's just awful. Oh, damn. This is awful. <laughs> well, you can glitch a little. I'm sure we can hear you, so that's a good thing. Uh, Michael Forster, what's up, buddy? He said that the latest Indiana Jones movie is garbage. Well, I've heard. I haven't even seen it. I I, uh... I didn't mind it, but I'll tell you why. I'm going to come at it a little different. Jeff and I will come at it a little different because we saw the first Indiana Jones in a theater. It wasn't the a theater, yeah. only by the time half of you all were born, like Brittany and probably. Oh, yeah. Years. That was. Um, I, mean, I don't know. Beginner's Guide. She may be older. Beginner's like was know. amazing. Right. So when we see it, it's like there was little Easter eggs in the show or in the movie that you're like, Oh my God, I remember that. Oh, that's cool. And this and that. Plus um, Harrison Ford's a great actor. And I think that, you know, just to watch him redo it at that, it's, it's pretty awesome. And, you know, Jeff and I were born in the seventies, me in the middle, Jeff, a little bit before me, sixties, a little bit more. I'm seventies. Jeff is a sixties, late sixties. And I'm a mid seventies baby. But um, a lot of people here were born in the eighties or in the late eighties. And so these movies were already, you know, a decade old. Right, so when you right. see, when we see stuff, I mean, when I was a little kid, my father had went and saw the movie alien in the theater. Right. Little did I know, you know, in, in 2018, they would do, I think it was, no, it was even sooner than that, maybe 17, 16, 17. They did a movie called Prometheus. Correct. And that yeah. really yeah. explained that being in the chair who we didn't know what it was, but it was, it was a human, just a different type of human, but a human. And yep. uh, Prometheus right. really explained that opening scene to the original alien, which was really good. And so oh, we yeah. see stuff like that, like, Oh, Prometheus was boring and I didn't like it. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry that Spider-Man is not running around shooting webs and cutting right. people <laughs> up with Wolverine. I mean, these are, these are more movies like, you know, because, like, I understand a brand, but how long can you run with a brand? And how many times can you kill a superhero and then restart a universe again? And then now everything's changed and they're hybrids and all this kind of stuff. It's the perfect it's the perfect um, franchise because they could pretty much do whatever they want. Exactly. Yeah. Kill them exactly. off and bring them right back for another movie or bring back their alter ego or their kid or their, you know, it's it's endless. Absolutely endless. I think they've done it to death. You know, um, uh, all the HBO. I, I think that you're told. I totally agree with you. Yeah, the the HBO series all started good, and um, like the Punisher and Daredevil and all that, and they cut it off before it got too hokey. You know, especially. But you got to know when to. You got to know when to cut it. What's that? You got to know when to cut it. Like oh, if you're doing anything like that, you got to know when to cut it. it. It's like an NFL quarterback. They always stay in the game way too long, and you know, look like shit for their last couple seasons. Which is even even though I came into the game pretty late on the Indiana Jones trilogy, like <clears throat> I still loved the original Indiana Jones, and oh, you really? grow to love the character. And trilogy, the movie I think there's five the of them. No, I mean like the original, like the original. original. The original, was, I think it was original two, and then the Crystal Skull came out was the third, right? No, there was no, there no was the third one was when he went with his dad, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Yeah, there's yeah. The original, great one. And then they but what the I'm series. saying is. Yeah, but I'm saying is like just take those three original. I think for me, this very, very last one, it wasn't it wasn't bad to me only because it was nostalgic. He's so old now and having to be able to do what they were able to do with like the CG, and then you get to see him now as an old man conquering his old like going for his hat and putting it on at his age that he's at now. That's a whole legacy yeah. of him being told through that hat. And so that hat was the iconic symbol of who Indy was. And so to see him grab it and to have that there, there's like those little moments that if you appreciate the nostalgia and you appreciate, you know, what people don't realize what goes on behind the scenes is those movies Harrison put his blood, sweat, and tears into the first three. So and I was so, looking at these here. So it's the Raiders of the Lost Ark, I believe was the first one. First, yeah. And then yeah. Uh, Temple of Doom. The Temple of Doom. And then yeah. Kingdom of the... Crystal well, Skull was the fourth one, correct? Yeah, Crystal Skull was the fourth one where they introduced Julia Buff as his. Oh, son. that's right, as his young self. Yeah, so it what, was River was Phoenix before Indiana he Jones, the Last Crusade. That's one with his Crusade. father. That's one with his dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Last Crusade was good. Just iconography and 
Yeah, it last was one was pretty good. I mean, it was a good one. You still like, up, baby? you know, growing up in the '80s, every guy wanted to be either Indiana Jones or freaking Han Solo. It was all about yeah. Ford and Ford. You know, nobody wanted to be. I, mean, I always wanted Walker. to be. Um, I always wanted to be. Uh, Vader. I could see my that. My favorite was oh. the Emperor, bro. In that movie, my favorite was the Emperor, dude. That oh, man, shot yeah, lightning out of his shit, dude. He had his own throne. He was the man. He looked just like Cardinal Ratzenberger, too, man. Dead ringer. <laughs> <laughs> Not Cardinal Everybody's getting mad at me, Jeff, because my favorites were the villains. I didn't like you. Oh, I love like Boba Fett. Fett. Growing up, Boba Fett was always my favorite. I remember oh, my God, like, saving awesome. up the, um, the packages to send away because you couldn't buy Boba Fett in the store. And nobody really knew who he was after a new after the first one, A New Hope. But um, you know, he's always been my my favorite. I have a bunch of Boba Fett tattoos, and Boba yeah. Fett's awesome. I mean, oh, even, he, the, even the series they did on him was good. When I was the Mandalorian I, series is really done well. I'm very impressed. Oh, with the that Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very good. Have you seen the book of Boba Fett? Ah, uh, no, I haven't seen that. It's, well, it's no, good. maybe I have. It's really good. I, I like that you a know, lot. I might have because we were trying to watch all of those. That came before Mandalorian, right? No, it came after the first season of Mandalorian, I think. Oh, yeah. yeah. It, did. it came after. Yeah, yeah Mandalorian we was well done. I thought they kind of overdid uh, um, uh, Grogu a little bit, you know, Baby Yoda. and um, But it was still good. I liked um, uh, Amy Sedaris, the crazy um, uh, mechanic. With all the robots and stuff, she was yeah. awesome. In that yeah, movie. great scene. You know what I think is great about about um, Grogu is the fact that, and even me watching it, you start to believe that that thing is real. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like you don't even you stop thinking while wow, that's animated. You're like, that's just fucking awesome. It, it, what it's great the personality they gave it too was huge. You know, it was uh, they really they did well with it. They didn't they didn't overblow like they didn't make it too Disney. Yes, I do. You know? You know, I don't. I don't yeah. even remember um, Amy Sedaris' series on Comedy Central, "Strangers with Candy." Remember that about the the forty year old um, who got out of jail and went back to high school. Yeah, amazingly funny series. Really, really good. Oh man, now he wants to go out. <laughs> Another thing I was going to say was, you know, I think I sent it to you today, but like I always, my favorite, um, two of my favorite villains of the eighties of my time was Mumra. From the oh, of Mamra, ancient spirits. Yeah, and um, Skeletor. Now oh, he, now he, man, had a friend I'm named Fisto. Gonna let the dog out. And I just don't know how good that is, Brittany. Wait, what? he had a friend he named a Fisto. Friend? Yeah, I didn't think that was too cool. Fisto. <laughs> yeah, Fisto. I think they should have thought the name on the animal. <laughs> they should have thought about the name. I can. He's got this big hand, you know. Like he's a fister, and I just don't understand why they didn't think about yeah, that. that. Yeah, that's what they were that's that's good that's 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 right away. Go. And how about Ram Man too, who was like a spring-loaded butt? Yeah, I remember him. You remember <laughs> you could push him down as a toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was the best. Ram Man, and yeah, they were all good. What was that other one? I like Man E Faces. He was a good villain. Where his head would turn around, and you'd have different uh, different faces on it, like four different yeah. faces. Yeah, many head. faces. Yep, many faces. Um, Sarge, his sergeant at arms, and then he had um, sergeant at arms, yeah. but Skeletor had the cool, he had Sly, and uh, no, oh, Sly Beast was Man. Mummer's buddy, Sly was Mummer's buddy, he had Merman, Beast Man, Beast Man. Um, who's the other one who used to torture all the time? Oh, god, yeah, very, yeah, Beast Man was kind of dumb, yeah, yeah, yeah Mongor Beast was Man. awesome, he was definitely the idiot of the bunch. Um, Mongor was pretty cool, Thundercats, and oh. Mummer was my favorite, and I used to have. I kept them and I still can't find them, but I had the little mummy and it would come and it was in a coffin. And then I think all the evangelists got all worked up over it. My mom probably threw it away, but I had that. And then I had um the big mumro with the big headdress on him. Nice. You know, he, he was like, the, and those characters were big. And I just remembered as a kid, I was like, yeah, I'm fucking mumro, dude. I think that was. So I would kill time. Lino and Panther all the time. I'd throw them in the oh, lake. Panther, yeah. Panther. Panther. It was uh, a, a Cheetah. You know, my favorite. And Chitara. Chitara. <laughs> yeah. Panther was interesting. He was like a he was like a senior citizen Panther man. It was just it was kind of weird. <laughs> yeah, I always I was gonna say I always thought like Lou Gossett Jr. after like 50 would be a perfect like live action uh Panther. He looked that's just that's like probably him. true. 
And he just died, actually, uh, Lou Gossett. Yeah. So did the lead singer of um, Steelheart. I know not and, many people know who that is. And the Juice, really man. Up, man. The Juice died today, yesterday. Who did? OJ. Oh, yeah. I sent you pictures remembering OJ. Yep. Yeah, yep. we got those. I got yeah, those. Those were hilarious. Yeah, he, uh, great? After he yeah. turned his wife into a Pez dispenser. Yeah. I, I know. Sorry. I couldn't believe it. He almost cut her head clean off and then yep. walked around yep. in it. He got, he got lucky getting away with that. That's a crime of passion all day long, you know, that 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 amount of, you know, damage and everything. Definite crime of passion. I mean. Yeah, Cobra David, Commander. I mentioned that too. Uh, Cobra was cool. Cobra oh. Commander. Cobra Commander. Cobra Commander. I don't, well, you don't care about what, beginners? What is it that you don't care? Probably OJ. Um, um, yeah, they were uh, pretty interesting back then. What's really funny is the fact that, like, all the characters that you just mentioned that were like, oh my God, who would have thought about making this character? Like they didn't think to catch this was when Robot Chicken came with theirs. They called out all the horrible characters. Oh my God, they were so good, ones. man. They, they, <laughs> they, I love they nailed when they that. do that with the old yeah. with the old Thundercats dolls. Yeah. And they have some great ones of um of Troy's favorite characters, uh, Skeletor in like oh, traffic and dealing with people and like those skits are some of the best ever and like they made fun of he-man like nobody's oh, he -Man oh because i mean because if you look guy. at him you know before we get on the crystal skulls we got a couple minutes and i'll let you take off with pretty but he wore like a like a, like he wore tights and a lavender shirt and he was like yeah and oh, prince adam <laughs> they made prince him terrible definitely very feminine no doubt about it yeah like, oh, I mean, like it's okay. there's nothing oh, yeah. wrong with that but it was like no 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 little kid no, you got G.I. Joe, he's spitting tobacco and blowing up trucks, and then you have He-Man. At least yeah. Lionel yeah. was badass, dude. He wore a, a blue yeah. onesie, dude. He like was like, Thundercats, and then he would like, Thunder. turn into this Thunder. thing. And when you were a kid, that was a lot of fun, man. You know, oh, dude, was, totally. Was I, I think that, um, you know, and I, I wish Ant was on, because I need a, uh, you know, I need I need the, the Gadar reading on Prince Adam. Oh, 100%. He will agree. If he comes in, <laughs> yeah. he will totally he, agree. He knows. You know, he dressed like either like a leather dude or a professional wrestler. So it's like, you decide. You know, he looked like like um, like Dusty Rhodes, kind of. But he did. More of like, um, like a Dutch boy Lloyd Christmas hairdo. You know, when he... And I was watching a lot of sword. the shows. It was like the movies and the TV shows that made us. That's a series, you know? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Did you watch love the one on, Thund on, um, on on Masters of the Universe, dude? The way they had... Oh, the, the toys or the uh, the show? The actual show when they talked about making the cartoon into the toys. It was the whole thing. Oh, yeah. And they they used all other toys and they just remodeled them. And yeah, resold them. But they were the original He-Man. They just changed the color and added like... Right. A oh, yeah. They made them blue. Again. What was right? That guy, um, he was a rare one. It was like his nemesis, anti He Man, or um, yeah, you know whatever the bad He Man was. That, that was brilliant, though. I mean, you know, it's like you so. Beginner's guy said Shira. I remember Shira. She was awesome. Princess of and Power did do something then. Yep. Yeah. Oh, oh, and uh, what was uh what was the one that was Shira? But what was the other one? Um uh uh T Queen T Tila or whatever. What was her name? Tila, Tila? was was uh, He Man's girlfriend. Or si I thought it was his sister. Or sister. What? Maybe both. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, was it his know. girlfriend? Certainly it could be like West Virginia. Was Tila his girlfriend legit? I don't know. And then Sheena was – who was Sheena then? I forget. Or She-Ra. I think he, she was his cousin or she was related somehow. To, All she I know is Skeletor gave no shits about bullying people. He was the best. Get out of my – get out of my room, you numbskulls. <laughs> You're a bunch of morons. I loved it. <laughs> You know, you know, when you think about like Skeletor and Mumra, you know, they were they were cool characters, but they were terrible bad guys because they literally never won. You know, they get the little victories, but then He-Man would come back or the Thundercats would come back. And, you know, I, I feel like that they're almost the same person in two different, you know, parallel universes, Mumra, True. Skeletor, you know, similar voices, kind of similar mannerisms. And in the latest ones before the anime ones. There was like a new series on Netflix. He actually killed He Man and got a hold of Gray Skull. I thought that was awesome. No shit. Yeah. He's just chilling in Gray Skull, you know, drinking. Yeah, and then they never redid it again. There and smoking cigar. Yeah, I was kind of hoping that they would do it again, but they never did it again, man. I mean, like he's Skeletor, so you'd figure Castle Gray Skull kind of should be his. You know, Prince Adam should live in like a sparkly palace. You know, yeah. With, uh, you know, marshmallow trees and. 
Yep, Evil Inn. I've got I've got all those oh, yeah, characters Evil too. Inn I have awesome. Evil Inn, a couple different renditions. Yeah, I'm Evil Inn was his Evil Inn, right? Wasn't that Evil Inn was Skeletor's girl? That's what I meant. Like that was his queen or whatever, right? So Tila yeah. was He Man's loyal friend. <laughs> he was a warrior she, princess. His loyal friend was she like a loyal friend with benefits or on the side? No, but don't you remember he would always say loyal friends? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the He-Man movie was awesome, Seth, with Dolph Lundgren as... Heck yes, dude. I know I can't move the camera right now, but I have the... From the movie, I have the um one of the uh, replicants of the Havoc staff in here hang up. Life-size, like a huge one. Nice. That's awesome. Up above the window. I'll have to, like, bring that down next time and have it sitting next to who, this Havoc who was staff. A little this is like an upgrade guy. Havoc staff. Um, What's the, that? The, the wizard in He-Man that floated around... Oh yeah, um the wizard and he look it up. You'll have I to look it up. It, man. You might I remember better. Snarf was from Snarf. Thunder, Snarf. Uh, Thundercat. Thundercat. Snarf. Was it O? Was it Q? It was Q, right? Wizard and He Man was Orco. Orco. I kept saying O like an idiot. Oh Orco. yeah, there's what it looks like. Thank you, Michael. He had it too. Take care, David. Have fun at work, brother. There, David. Um, yeah, hey, Orko, David. that's right. He was pretty cool. He would always like make stuff. And then what I always thought is He-Man's cat was always a chicken shit. Oh, Cringer. Okay. You would go from yeah. Cringer to Battle Cat, man. I had a dog like that. Yeah, that was Orko. Mm -hmm. Snarf. Snarf, snarf. <laughs> I had a little snarf toy. I think I got from you, Troy. You probably did. It was one of oh. my collections. I, I know oh, I have uh -huh. a box of those figures somewhere. I, I just I saw this Star now. Ones, Jeff. Uh, sorry, man. As Masters of the Universe evolved, Tila became a clear love interest for He Man there and his is. alter ego Prince Adam. Maybe yeah, she didn't even know they were the same person and she was just like cheating on Prince Adam with He Man. Uh, probably. He's Hey, Prince Adam loved that. All right, we're cutting yeah, it in 828. Brittany, let's get into a little bit of the Masters uh, the, of the Universe. Brittany, let's get into the um, Crystal Skulls a little bit. Can you give us some background on that? Because I'm uh, like, dog Jeff thought stuff. they were just full of liquor, and I thought they were just made up thousands of years ago by humans, <laughs> just to leave something a little bit behind. Well, I'm technically like, nobody knows the origin of why the Crystal Skulls actually started or where that part came from. Okay. They were found in Mexico in like the early 1800s. And of course, at that time, one of the leading... Um, teams that would step in was obviously the Smithsonian. So whenever anything was found that was out of the ordinary or an archaeological dig or anything like that, it was always the, the first person that would swoop in was the Smithsonian Institute and their scientists yep. and whatever. And so um, the first one was found in the 1800s and then it was sent to the Smithsonian um, and I think by a gentleman by the name of William something or other. And then it wasn't until like the 1940s or 50s, a woman that was working at Smithsonian basically started like going through a lot of the archive, going through everything, started finding the crystal skulls that were picked up from the, like basically in Mexico from a lot of the stuff that was going on. <laughs> um, and started going through them. They were having them tested and based basically off the way that they were created they now believe that there is not a single crystal skull that is true. That's mm. real and authentic. Only based merely on the advanced technology that would have been needed at that time to create such a skull. And because these skulls were not formed out of multiple pieces of crystal and put together. It was actually like one giant quartz crystal cut and then shaved into a skull and polished. So the, the carving is not abnormal for that period of time going back centuries to the time that they would have been making these types of stuff. It okay. was the way that they were polished. Like smooth. So how the actual, like the polishing tools they would have needed, there's two different types of techniques. And the way that the rotations were going is believed that it was more made by a machine. Where the debate has come into factor is because we're still uncovering so much from the Aztecs and from all the Mayans and things like that, that we don't have enough information. We know that they were an advanced civilization as it was. Okay. But where science goes, it's impossible archaeologists to believe in theory of possibility 
are battling this saying maybe they did have the technology, but we just haven't uncovered it yet. And a lot of scientists agree with that because we are still discovering a lot of new things and styles of how even the Egyptians would take care of things. And so it's a heavy debate. One scientist from the Smithsonian believes that there's not a single crystal skull that's real. Um, where there's still a heavy, healthy debate, 50-50, that says it is, and some of it says it isn't. And it all boils down to how they're polished so smoothly and made into perfect skulls. So Uh-oh. that's basically where this comes down to. We lost the host. Let me help you pop that in. It's probably a stupid signal. I'm here. There he is. There he is. I was just, I had to go into my computer. So, I was it's a heavy following debate. what Brittany it's was saying. I was a long time. I'm, on the, I'm on the part. side of belief. I'm on the side that because of how much they did do and they did accomplish, they're very advanced. I think they were well advanced craftsmen. And knowing that it was a solid piece of crystal, which again still kind of baffles the mind of science, tells me that they were advanced enough to figure out how to create this. But what for? What was the reason of having a crystal into a skull, except for possibly the technology of trying to harness one's thought and placing it like a recording into a skull of that person? So being that it's quartz, quartz record, they actually record memory, record things, and water actually holds memory. So the theory was that maybe quartz crystals could maybe house the thoughts or the minds of those that were passing, and all would represent those that had passed and have that knowledge recorded into the quartz crystal itself. Well, that's an interesting statement because they said that all that quartz, I think we talked about this one time, Jeff, you and I, uh, where they did the um, Civil War, all that quartz in the ground. Um, recorded everything that was there and they're trying to figure out ways to bring it out into sound and visual premonition. So that Mm -hmm. would be like a hologram. Amazing dude. If they could do that. And I wouldn't be surprised if they can do that because we're always lied to. So I wouldn't be surprised. For sure. sure. That's why I was on the fence with these quartz crystals that they were advanced. They did have this technology. They knew what they were doing. But unfortunately, the part of where the Western science and most most general science nowadays stuff says they go, they just weren't that advanced. They we're more advanced, but we really aren't. We're we're we really aren't. We're kind of dumb. I hate to say that on a lot of things. They were extremely more advanced on so much more that we don't even think about now that we take for granted that they actually put time and effort into and really thought this stuff out where we don't anymore. So I don't think we should say it's completely impossible they're not real blah 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 merely based on the fact of how they were polished and how they would have been formed when we know egyptians have created extraordinarily well now i want to talk about that for a minute. let me touch on this so a lot of people don't believe me when i say but there's a place i think the place is called Rang- wrangle island in e- in egypt is that my mm-hmm. correct wrangle island i think um, I could be wrong on the exact aim and location, but I think it's Wrangell Island, if I remember. In up and up at least as four thousand years ago, they had a small population of mammoth. Okay? Of what? Mammoth. 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 Yeah. Oh yeah, so, you're, that's that's yeah, you're right, Trey. But that's actually above Russia. That's up by the Yukon in Russia. It broke off from Russia. Okay, well that's you're okay. But, but we could, yeah. but we could still transport mammoths to where. Oh, the, for sure. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and I'm going to touch on something that I want to tell everybody who's watching because I sent a video to Brittany and Jeff um, last week about, you know, this this Christian perspective on dinosaurs, humans in the Bible. Right. Interesting. Which was really interesting because if you just took the Bible as archaeology from what they were writing in that de- those particular decades and those centuries and all, and you know, those types of things. Um, if you had two or three, I think what was the movie 7,000 BC or 6,000 BC? What was that movie? Remember, it was very primitive. The comedy movie, or no, no, it was a real no, movie. Oh, a real one. Oh, About, yeah, I, it was something like that. Not that era, I I could, like that. people yeah. know what it is. But when they were building yeah. those pyramids with those ramps and all that stuff, they were using mammoths in that movie. Two or three mammoths could move a 4,000 pound or a two ton stone with, with, with ease. If you see exactly what, that's right. Ten thousand BC was the ten thousand BC. Yeah. You ever see yeah, it, Jeff? That was good. Yeah, I think so. Back in the eighties, it, it was good. No, I don't think, think it was that old. No, no this was newer. Two thousand eight. Yeah. yeah, this was newer. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I have seen it. It was done well. You know, the hunt scene with the saber tooth. They had the tar pits in it. There were mammoths. It was yada, intense. Yada, yada, yada. Right. Yeah. Have you ever so seen the tar really, pits? Really, really cool to check out. I mean, they're a little touristy now, but. 
it's pretty neat. The tar pits, just the oh, hundred percent concept of it, and how yeah, I, I went to LA, Jimmy and I the surface. It was awesome. Jimmy and I, well, I'll send you some pictures later, some stuff that yeah. was bubbling out of the ground. It was really cool, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. No, I went. It, it's, it's awesome, man. Did you see how many wolf skulls they had there? Yeah, and uh, they got, uh, like, the stuff that floats up there. And I'm sure there's lots of mobsters in there and shit, too, you know. And... They found <laughs> they found humans from original Native American. They had them on display, the one human yeah. that they found. And they said the theory, like, if you dig, you can still find the pictures where people had went and put it you know, on their Facebook or their MySpace at the time or whatever. And it talked about he was in there probably trying to steal meat before it got completely sunk in. Then they said a saber tooth or a wolf jumped him. They all got stuck and they died together. They found him with wolves and a saber tooth on top of a mammoth. That was yeah, fucking maybe they're all gone. Oh, on, man. <laughs> Pretty cool. You can, but, you can um, see a saber tooth, a wolf and a man on a, uh, on a mammoth. Maybe yeah. They, they yeah. said they believe he was probably trying to hunter gather meat. Off the dying yeah. mammoth that was probably still alive, well, and he was harvesting the mammoth, cutting it while it was alive. Yeah, got stuck likely. in the tar, and you, you uh, yeah, and uh, you can get burned in there too, right? It's pretty hot. It's yeah, like turns you in, just burns you out of your bone. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like, and it bubbles. Yeah. It's like it's like yeah. yeah, boiling lava, black lava. It's just crazy. boiling you alive. Yeah, just it's one of the cool. what was interesting though, Jeff. When we went there, the country, I think. When we went there, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I think there's no, a lag, but when we went there. Jimmy and I were walking down these paths, mm -hmm. and all along those paths, they had like what looked like where we do at the beach here for sea turtles. Yep. And the grass oh, yeah. is black, and they're like, these are new holes forming. We're just letting them form, and then we're going to build the mines around them for people to look at. This is natural. And I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, dude, what if it keeps going into people's yeah. like, you know, you're in your living room, and the concrete goes, it gets followed up by tar. Yeah, right? So. You know, that's pretty much weird molten lava hot shit anyway, so you can imagine. But that that in itself was 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 awesome. So if you go back to what that guy was talking about and using that as reference, then there were dinosaurs at the time of humans, right? Mm -hmm. Because he had a very valid point. How did this thing hit the world and then everything, only the dinosaurs died and none of the other stuff? It was very interesting because something had to survive to evolve into what we see today as crocodiles. Um as, uh, and crocodiles, if you look at the bone structure um, in the Egyptian Nile crocodiles, right? When they bring them in and on the, that they were, the, the kings used to keep crocodiles as pets. I think that's absolutely amazing. And there's literature on that. And please feel free, folks, to look into that. Um, when they do the tour at the museums, you can see the crocodiles, the mummified crocodiles. Some that's are cool. mummified with their babies at the time that their king or their leader died. Yada, yada, yada. But I want you to know something. Those were put in a tomb 6,000 years ago. And there's no noticeable evolution between that one and the one we have today. Mm -hmm. As far as locale. And yep. stuff. Like there isn't any bigger nostril. Or there isn't any anything pretty weird. I mean, there may be some very minor things that may be different. So, you know, you could take like maybe longer fingernails or maybe the density of their skull was a little thicker, stuff like that. But they really have not evolved in 6,000 years. So they pretty much are the perfect machine for what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And the only reason crocodiles become extinct and ran out now or in, in detrimental is because of humans, like as yeah. with everything. I think so. that's pretty much how everything becomes extinct. For yeah. sure. You know, unless other animals in the ecosystem evolve to the point where they, they take over their food source or, you know. Like well, look at this. Here's a fun fact, Jeff. In 1916, the white rhinoceros was discovered, untouched, just living its world, and it's been gone. Now it's think just about about gone, yep. yep. Think it's, about that. It came and went. But if we had not discovered it, right, and not had called it out, <laughs> maybe it would be more in population and be thriving and surviving. The problem is, is we get involved, and That's I really don't cool really beginner. agree with a lot of how it's handled. But we get involved with these animal species, and immediately our thing is, "Well, shoot it, let's kill it." Well, like, it it open. Look out. yeah, cut it open. It's like, but the problem is, is now we've put it on this giant radar, and it's like, how are we studying it? How are we learning how it's you know growing and evolving every year with right. environmental changes and stuff? We're not learning anything, you know, and so. We just put it on the radar for more people to want to use it for right. payment. And yeah. more men with big guns oh. wanting want to go out and shoot it, you know. I'm yeah. sure I'm sure it was a huge deal to to uh to kill a white rhino back then. You know, and, and, wow. uh, for sure. Well that I brought the camera up a little bit so we can kind of talk a little bit more. But that was the um that was what we were talking about. Justin and I were just talking about a couple things. Um one was you know the Moa Moa bird. 
Mm -hmm. so we actually found a, after the one area was extinct, we found a whole other island with them. Yeah. And then we went and shot all them and killed them too. And then put our boots on yep. it and held our gun like we did something special because, you know, the literature on the mole moa is that the fact that those animals there will really walk right up to you there they they had no fear of people they weren't aggressive they weren't meat eaters so they would walk up to you and people would just put a gun to them and blow them away so the animals looking at them they shot them people are really just fucking disgusting and they always will be yeah. um and and don't 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 get worked up folks if you hear this being, oh man hunting is the way of life you know it's great you're allowed to hunt go hunt for your food i'm not saying that but to blow away an animal simply for a trophy because it's different or big doesn't make you special it makes you a jackass just so you know yeah just like so, the alligator hunt we so wiped everything out yeah you don't have to stalk well, the alligator or track it. You just walk up on top of it and put one in its head. It's not going to go anywhere if it's that big. You know, it'll yeah, let well, you there's walk. Like, there's, there's like hunters out there that know like I my annual deer. I get two a year or whatever, three a year. And that's what I do. And I keep the meat or whatever. Like, and that's fine. That's not trophy. And that's just, they look at it as like a, a practicality in their life of hunting. And that's fine. It's when trophy hunting becomes an issue for me. That's when yeah, I get that a rare you know, the albino giraffe or the rare, uh, the giraffe with the skin um, abnormality that made them black. The whole giraffe was black. Guess what somebody did? It was a trophy hunt. They went oh, and shot it. And it. By the police. Is that true? Huh? <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God. So, um, so, you know, like to me, that's, that's where I have a problem. You hear about these amazing lions, like in Africa, there were some of the, there was a breed of lion and I can't remember the name right now. That was, one of the largest in existent lions from the Pleistocene era. Cave lions or whatever. Existed, yeah, yeah, that existed until the 1920s and 30s. And what did we do? Oh my God, there's this amazing lion. Let's go gun it down and put it on my wall. Yeah, and what a rare, beautiful have, animal. I'm going to kill it. From the Pleistocene era into the 1920s and 30s, think about, think about the time gap there. So for me, that like, that pisses me off because yeah, I'm it was like, called the Eurasian cave opinion. lion, but it was a cave there, lion. The yeah. Eurasian cave lion. You have no Everything, appreciation right. Everything's for bigger in Eurasia, just like the freaking Eurasian eagle owl. Wow, yeah. Yeah, true. It just made me mad because I'm just like, there's so, a difference. So, you know, Bernie, I have to be careful and I'll be clear right, again. Hunting, hunting is, is, a, is a thing that, that people do and, and that's okay. Cases, and and I, I was talking with a hunter the other day and we were having a discussion and they said, listen, you know, um, and, and Brittany was with me when just recently when we were working with someone who, you know, does field work and works out in the, in the field, you know, they'll, they'll take their deer, their elk or whatever their, their ticket is for the year and they live off of it. But you know that the meat that they're consuming when they're, you know, 400 miles out into the wilderness and they bring it back, it's clean. It's not yeah. full of hormones. It's not full of, you know, pesticides from well, whatever else is right. spraying in the galaxy, maybe whatever's in the fucking rain, because people fuck that up too. But when you think about what we're consuming and what they consume and they're, and these people live on these, on these remote islands and that's a way of life. It's not like we get up to go to Publix. Hey, you want to get some chicken breast and we'll do chicken Alfredo with uh you know, crumbled cheese. You know, it's, it's yeah. different, but when you kill stuff, like to me, I've always had an issue with blowing away big alligators because they're so old. Yeah. Yeah. They've done a really good job of populating the the other alligators in the area, you know, like all the other ones that we've seen. Yeah, and there's um, no sport in it. And I and I think, yeah, I think that they're it's like with fishing. You're not allowed to take a Goliath grouper anymore. AK right. Jewfish. For those of you that get offended, that's what it was called. As a matter of fact, there's still a place in the keys called Jewfish Creek and Jewfish Bridge, just so you know. So if you don't like yeah, it, I go swimming on that down. bridge. But um yeah, so the giant grouper fish, they're like, listen, you know, there's certain groupers. You're not allowed to take the Goliath grouper. It's a protected species because, you know, they overdid it. Yeah. They overdid yep. it. Yep. Um, and I've noticed since I was a kid living in Florida, seeing the size of the alligators and the abundance that we started to see after they were protected, um, you know, in the in the late 60s, 70s, whatever, and they start protecting them again, um, I would see a large amount of alligators, and we would see these bigger alligators. You weren't allowed to hunt them, right? So they become smart. Now they're traveling over. Like if you guys live in the area, you want to go to Circle B Ranch over there by Lakeland, yeah, you'll see. Here. Look at that alligator. Spuds <laughs> McKenzie. You will see large alligators. They know how to go into the areas. They're not allowed to be hunted. That's a sign of intelligence. I find that very intriguing. To be quite yep. honest with yeah. You. yeah. You know, they're pretty strict about where they tag you, right? You have to. Yeah. Hunt. And we do a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And it's pretty, um, pretty crappy, man. Like, you know, to, to, to. Kill something that big because you know gator meat that that big of an animal is not going to be. Of course not. It's probably uh, gamey. Like it's probably all muscle and fat at that point. You know, it's 
My question is because because people see. Let me answer that, Judy. Because people see alligators and they have this thing. Like I hear it every day because I deal every single day with alligators. If I'm not dealing with them here, I'm dealing with them at my accounts. And I have a, 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 a it's 2024, and I have a revolving door of humans that keep coming, keep coming, and they ask the same questions. Sometimes they're stupid, folks. Sometimes you really need to think about what you're going to ask before you ask it. I understand it's my job to educate you, but there's ways to ask things. There's also common sense. Like if you come up, you're like, hey, I hear alligators are learning to drive cars in Miami and they're actually hunting pythons. That kind of stuff right there just, you, you just, that's how stupid it is. Alligators. <laughs> but alligators are, are, everybody's terrified of them. They are the, right. they are the, the creatures of terror. You know, they've been, you, they've been brought up to think like that, like these, they're the monsters of the night. And so when you come from a place like Michigan okay. or Ohio and you're like, oh my God. It's a novelty know? and a scary one at that. Yeah. And then you go, oh my God, you guys have giant dinosaurs that eat people. Well, that's not necessarily true. And, and, and slight topic with that, there's a crocodile that lives in South Florida and it's missing the center of its jaw. Okay. Center of its jaw. Now, I've seen that crocodile. Me and Ashley Lawrence from Gator Boys, not too long ago, went out to where they live, and we got to see him. He was sitting up there in all his glory. He's a big, fat, old male dude. He's got a big split jaw. He's awesome. But he's very, hello, Michelle. He's very shy. So when we walked up, Bernie, he opened his mouth. So that means, hey, don't do that. It doesn't mean I'm going to attack you. It means if you keep coming, I'm going to jump in the water. And that's what they do. Crocodiles yeah. like that, those crocodiles on land, they feel like little mice. They jump in the water. I'll argue yeah. that with anybody you want. That's their domain. Unless you've got right, unless you've got a habituated animal, right? Yeah. See you, beginners. Um, they uh, they're now saying in the papers that that's the one that bit the guy on the news. That that one bite. And so you know they're like, well, and I just really disagree. And I really think that they need to do a bite mark lineup with whatever crocodile they catch before they start experimenting. Absolutely. Instead of just killing random random crocs. And for, for you people yeah. that want them all killed because you're an idiot and you want to kayak in the Everglades, stay the fuck out of the Everglades. Just stay out of the Everglades. Yeah. Go you're back to your little suburban fisheries and your fake canals and you fish in there. Leave those poor animals alone. They never bother anybody. If you want them killed, don't come to the Everglades. Don't come to Florida. We don't need you here anyways. So just keep that in mind. That's, that's so my problem. We always got to protect like my, the animal always comes first, especially that's, in that is, that is the biggest problem I have in most of these cases, especially when it's like, oh, we have a nuisance alligator. Is it really a nuisance or are you the nuisance? My yeah. my biggest problem is people. And I know people are going to get mad at me for saying this, but I frankly don't care anymore because I'm tired of this poor animal being killed because of your dumb mistake. Correct. It is not the it animal's fault that we built is. a whole bunch of homes in their habitat and pushed them out right. into walking right. through neighborhoods to be like, where's food? You've ruined right. where my home is, where my trees are. It's the same thing. And I know people are going to be like, it's just a stupid squirrel. It's not a stupid squirrel. You're the problem. Right. You guys right. have you bulldozed in their territory. They, they, all they, the they, trees down. Right. Just, exactly. Yeah. And so you're driving on a road and you've got a tree on one side and two lanes and a tree on the other. And this poor squirrel knows and they've had to learn and adapt and evolve to this new environment. And you'll see them. They get up and they watch and they think, can I go now? I'm going to go now. I mean, they try. Sometimes. They think it out. You know, and sometimes, sometimes they, they try don't. to kill themselves. Could They're, you blame I them? It's idle. But I can see eclipse. Well, <laughs> I mean, I don't blame them. I've seen rabbits do it. But I'm just saying in general, <laughs> people get mad at me when I slam on my brakes. You know, and I know that there's a certain way you should try to avoid them. And there is a way you can actually do it with your not breaking, letting them go through your tires. Like there is a way, but it always freaks me out. So I slam on my brakes and then the a-hole behind me is pissed off, flipping off at me because it was a squirrel yelling at me that I, I stopped for a damn squirrel. You know what? Babe? You just proved your point to me that I don't care about you and I care about right, that. Squirrel. Right. And he shouldn't be driving so fast that he's going to hit you if you slam on your brakes anyway. On and a that's... 25 mile an hour zone. Right. Yeah. So no, I didn't have a problem because it goes as small as a, a squirrel all the way up to a bear. None of these animals are a nuisance. It is us that are the nuisance. We well, need to learn well, to adapt let, better let me, into animals' environments. Well, let me step I, I frankly in. believe that. Let me step in for a minute. Some of these animals have become a nuisance because people have made them a nuisance. They've made them oh, rely yeah. on what they're feeding again, them or, people. you know, like we heard from some people that we were working with recently, Jeff, you're going to love this. I'll wait till you come back. But we make animals idiots like that it's not it's idiots making animals idiots because it's never the animal's fault ever so no. they told us that they were out working and you know their their job is they protect you know people from wildlife etc 
and they said that they had tourists <laughs> carrying bacon yeah. up yep. to grizzly bears to get them to come up to them to eat out their hand to take a video. You should let those people die. That's just all I got to say, man. You should wrap them go. in and throw them to the Let them go because the they're going to go home and they're going to breed and make more dummies. Let's just get the dummies right. gone like what the wildlife does. I would say, yeah, okay, everybody, person, get your cameras ready. You're about to see some amazing footage. You're yeah. not going to get it anywhere else. Lone star right before you take Bacon that feeding, video. pay-per-view. Bacon feeding, hand-feeding grizzlies, <laughs> bacon, pay-per-view. Who wants to watch? Oh, I, I would great. Go, I would have no problem. I don't know why I'm like this. It's horrible. But I have no problem watching people get just obliterated by animals when they do something dumb. I think it's oh, one of the, the greatest things for me. I absolutely love it. I do but too. yes, Turons, tourist Turons. I love it, Michael. Good one. So, but when you see an animal hurt or somebody beating up an animal, you want to go there and burn their house down with them in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. But when you see an animal get innocent. tearing up a person, you're like, that was hilarious. Why would you stick your foot in its mouth in the first place, you idiot? Right? Yeah. You dumb. know, yep. like, you're just dumb and you're going to make more dummies and you're a dummy. So you can ask um, mom was with me. We were in Colony at the time when I lived out there. You're walking down by the beach, and for no reason, this guy started wailing on his dog on his lab for no reason. Like, I don't even know what the dog was doing. Like he literally was punching him in the skull. I was screaming at the top of my lungs, getting everyone's attention to show mom's like quiet, quiet. I'm like, no, like I was so mad. Because it's like they always have something to prove. So what do they do? They go after the most innocent little thing, and then they punch and attack the innocent little thing to make themselves feel bigger. And that, that I have a problem with that. And it well, there's a video, Jeff. Animal. There's a video I'll send you. I'm not sure if I sent out to my mom. I try to find these really violent videos. And so this guy was abusing his dog, and these dudes were like, we're not doing this anymore, man. They grabbed this dude up. They put the dog's choker chain around his neck, bro. They videoed it, too. Good. They jerked that motherfucker all over the streets. Good, they kicked him like he kicked a dog. They drug him around the corner. They yanked him when he was trying to stop. They yanked him up on his feet. And they're like, "You like it, man?" <laughs> it was awesome. It was like in, it was like in, in France or Germany or something. It was absolutely one of the coolest videos. It was like Good Samaritan. Finally, someone standing up for the dog. Yeah, pretty. No, I like yeah, people 100%. beating on animals. You know, if I don't if if I don't lower myself to beating the crap out of my my demon dog, then <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> it, it, you shouldn't. You know, you definitely shouldn't be. What's up, Ange? You definitely shouldn't be beating on, uh, you know, pets and any animals. You know, I'd love to see somebody go beat on one of the American crocodiles. That would last very. Oh <laughs> yeah. You know, or yeah, I saw some idiot on the internet too. Here's another kid. He wanted views, so he was mouth feeding an electric eel. <laughs> oh my god! You know, and, and he didn't Bro, die, unfortunately. He unfortunately, he didn't die because he should have. That would have been good for views, but. <laughs> When you do stuff like that, now the fish is a monster, you know, this and that. And we and we run into this constant thing where we always punish the animal again. We habituate those animals and we make them act that way. It's us. Um, of course. We we ruined South Florida's 100%. population of crocodiles because we overhunted them. And then we built so much. The little babies had no water. And we'll yeah. get into that in another show about how that all works for them and, and yeah. what comes later for the true saltwater crocodile, which is an American. They are truly a saltwater crocodile. Yeah. And um, the coolest species in the entire They are. I love them. I have one. I mean. You know, it, it's it's one of the most unique and cool species. You know, it only lives in one place in the entire country, within you know a couple hundred yeah. square miles. Yeah, for us, yep. It's, one that species does. Yes, that species yep, lives that's in, what I mean. in America. Yeah, and, and it's just. Uh, but Brittany, I have no, one I mean, named like, Herman, dude. I have an American croc. His name's Herman. I love him, dude. He's very he's, cool. He's, he's no, one of my favorite I know. Little crocodiles, dude. One of my favorite but the thing is, like, there are reasons why there's signs up. Like, I don't think people understand when it says, please do not feed the wildlife or feed the alligators. It's oh, not for you. They don't give a crap if oh, you die by them. Day. But it's literally to protect the animals from not being killed. Because what happens <laughs> is you're now training this animal that it's okay to come to us and right. we'll give you food. And you're training them on behavior that's not correct. And so yes, Matthew, those Herman. signs are not for you. It's for the animals Herman's to protect awesome. the animal in the long run because we're in their habitat. And stop right. teaching them bad behaviors. And my problem is an innocent animal dies because some stupid person decides to do something really dumb with this well, animal. And then all of a sudden it's like, now it's the animal's problem. No, it's ours. Yeah, you, you can't blame an alligator. alligator or or I want to answer something. Oh, an crocodile. Let me, let me yeah. answer. Let me answer, Matthew. The reason my animal's name is Herman is because one time when he was <laughs> little, little, and I was feeding him, they call. All the babies call. They'll see me walk in. Or like, they get going. So he would sit like behind his little stone. And he'd go, Herman. 
And I go, what, your, what was that? He go, Herman. That was the sound he made. So I always thought I was hearing Herman. So I'm like, oh, his name's Herman. He'll tell you when you walk in the room. So I just left it as Herman. It was just one of those really, really cool things, you know? So I got Herman, dude. Herman. I love it. That's how I used to sound when he was little. You just had a little fucked up call, and it was Herman. So I'd say, oh, his name's Herman. He'll tell you when you walk in there, people laugh. But um, that's just funny to me. But um, Brittany, awesome. we're, we're, we digress a little, but we had good with it. Let's let's talk about what we're doing next week um, while we're getting it cleared. Oh, yeah. So next week. You look like Troy... you're haunted in that frozen. Okay, thank God you changed. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not frozen on my side. Um, no, next Thursday at, I don't remember exactly the time. I think you do, Troy. But anyway, next Thursday we are being locked in at the Ma Barker house. I, I don't think paranormal... we'll be there until about 830. That's what we're going to okay, be doing. We will, we will open up viewership. I'm still clearing and trying to get clearance on stuff. So Okay. Yeah, we're going, so but I'm getting all the rules and regulations. Yeah, and so that'll be um, the Ma Barker. Um, and for those of you that don't know about that one, you can look it up as one of the longest shootout in FBI history in the state of Florida with a mob family known as the Ma Barker. Ma Barker and her two sons. Um, and one and of so her we'll sons be there. Like special Bob needs Barker or more autistic. And Travis Barker, her son. Yep. 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 And so we'll be there um, doing an yep, investigation with, with Ant. Um, with the bat paranormal team we will be there doing an investigation there so that'll be next thursday i did post um a little update with a reminder on the bat paranormal page so you can add it to your calendar as a reminder right. and you'll get notifications when it's right. going to go up and when it's happening seth when you get down to florida again bro we'll, we'll definitely talk to the people and see if we can work something else out too it's just because it's owned by the county you know there's just different rules you got to follow you know there's insurance there's things like that so it's not as easy yep. as when it's private. So uh, hands down again, thank you for people who are helping us get in there. I appreciate that. It's 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 been a, one of those really, really good things. It's up above the villages, right? Somewhere by like Lady Lake. Yeah. It's a, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think yep. of the name. It's like, it's got a weird well, name. Well, they moved it. It's, like it, so now it's, on, it's got a weird name. Or something, yeah. Yeah. And they moved the property now. And it's kind of, to be honest, like you can... Google Earth it or Google it and think you're going to find it even at the new location and, and you can't like it's so far back now they they have it strategically placed I think probably for protection and vandalism so people don't come in and mess with it because I mean that's that is a big problem with a lot of yeah because back in the late before. 90s into the early 2000s Seth and I lived over in Lake County when when, when I owned that pet <laughs> store and uh, Seth worked yeah. there with me and um we, we had all that kind of cool stuff. There was like a, in Mount Dora, there's like a hidden bunker that's huge and nobody tells anybody where it's at. It's the largest bunker in Florida. I think I figured a out A bomb that. bunker, dude. Nobody knows where it's at, Jeff. They protect that's it awesome. and hide it and all kinds of stuff. I know Seth knows what I'm talking about. You can find some but cool ass shit in there just to look at, man. Like, Yeah, the, if you look, the, I think the last time people got in there was like in 2007. Yeah. And um, it was private and there was pictures, dude. These old clothes were hanging, magazines, canned goods. It's all in there. Yeah, Seth said, although I've been trying to find it. Yep, they believe it's out in one of those things. That, now that we have all these thermal imaging and these um, these uh, these like x-ray imaging things, someone will be able to find it. They just oh, need so ground penetrating radar knows, and we'll find My dad it. knows where it's at. Okay, well, I'll call dad and find that out. Man. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cool places and some some I don't know if they exist or not, but like uh, like the Capone Speakeasy and the Everglades and yep. stuff like that. Um, I'm sure it's there. Capone has a, a house over in Lake County too, off Britt Road. A lot of people have have claimed to see um, uh, apparitions on uh, on Loop Road. You know, right at, at, the, at the back end of Loop Road uh, near the county line. You know what I always thought was really interesting, and I've been trying to see if it was like a debunk, and I've been looking at it. Um, they were they take Teslas, dude, with those cameras, those front reading cameras, and they drive them through cemeteries. Yeah, and do you people. see the apparitions appear on the camera like, like every time they do it? Crazy. It's, it's awesome so, so ridiculous. That. It looks for different movements in the molecules or whatever, dude. It's like the weirdest thing. Like I'm yep. hoping it's like this big made up funny thing because when I go to cemeteries, I never feel anything but peace. I don't ever feel. Yeah, no, I don't feel scared. It's even at night, never going through cemeteries. Like you know, doesn't mean I that you feel can't. Like we, it I feel like I'm up on different in. frequencies. Sure. sure. I just feel like we're walking into someone's house, man, and they're sleeping, dude. We're just being quiet and respecting their property. Dirt nap. Yeah, I don't I don't think about it as I never feel anything. And there have been places I've gone and I'm like, yeah, man, this is I can there's it's good. And you know, you'll walk right into a room, dude, and all your shit will stand up. 
And I'm not easily scared. I'm not one of those people like, oh, I believe everything's a ghost because I don't. A lot of times I think there's like a wire loose in the wall and it's making sounds or putting electromagnetic things in the air. So sometimes when you get hit like that, you have to like question it. You're like, well, <laughs> I don't know. We're going to work on this and that kind of thing. Yeah, I just don't want to get covered in uh, ectoplasm, you know. I don't think anybody does. <laughs> that would be awesome, dude. A Slimer, if you're out there, hit me up, dude. Oh, yeah, yeah. dude. I got hot dogs in my fridge, bro. <laughs> That's right. Slimer's I, built, I have a life-size Slimer mounted in my kitchen. I, I love that thing, man. Yeah. He's hanging out, man. He's ready. Oh, and that was another iconic movie from back then was the original Ghostbusters. Fucking A. And you know what I like? My favorite part, Jeff, is when young people come over and go, uh, why do you what have that, that guy in your kitchen? I'm like, it's yeah. Ghost, it's Slimer. Yeah, but what's the significance of the kitchen? I'm like, stop talking smart. You talking. haven't seen the movie. He eats, and he's always in the kitchen. He's always eating. <laughs> in the freezer, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. You know, he's, I, like I, the, he's like the ghost you want around because he's so ridiculous and crazy. Yeah, he just eats pizza and hot dogs. And if you remember, they did an yeah. animated show on Ghostbusters. Yep, and he, was, like, he hung out with him. He would always be sad when they left him behind. He's like, mm. yeah. The cartoon, I used to watch that Saturday morning cartoon, The Ghostbusters. It was great. I do it too when I'm cooking. I put it on my Alexa. Alexa, show me, you know, Ghostbuster cartoons, and it'll start season one. I love it. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> I but yeah, cried on the last one too. It was man. so good. We had some, I had a good time with everybody tonight. We're going to wrap it up. It's it's three minutes after the hour. Everybody's got things to do. I know Jeff does. It's nine o'clock. Check your eggs like an obsessive mother, man. I love that, dude. That reminds me. I'm going to go check my eggs. I got a couple cooking. I want to see what we got coming up. Um, nice. Oh, I want to know what you're, uh, what you're making. Well, we're making, well, I'm making tortoises. Like, I like to make tortoises. Oh, yep, yep. Um, and, and I think, you know, we're going to have some crocodilians again this year. That's going to be good. Nice. I, I got to get um, the last two. That's all right, man. We'll, we'll talk about that. Um, and uh, definitely, um, definitely we'll be back next week. It's going to be at the Mob Barker's house. We'll come on and off what we can. We'll run it. What's up, Jamie? We'll run it while we can. Yeah. I'm not going to promise signals good, but we will be filming. Uh, Brittany will put a lot of it together, and I'm, I believe you're going to upload it too, aren't you, Brittany? Mm-hmm. Yep. Greatness. And we'll develop a, a, a YouTube channel for uh, Bat Paranormal. That way we can upload some of the stuff that everybody missed if we couldn't go live the whole time because we'll be we'll be filming and then doing it as well. So. And it's also nice because, like, if I try and post reels or whatever, you only get on reels, you only get 90 seconds. And then even on TikTok, right. it only gives you three minutes. So YouTube allows us to put up five to seven minutes if we want content and kind of get. Yeah, a little it bit allows you to put up. I post over hours sometimes on YouTube. Oh, um, yeah. I just shows, mean if people shows, want YouTube, more. But... They upload fine, but you'll be able to. I think yeah. you'll lose, people start losing. If they're not into anything, they're going to start losing interest. But if you can get a good seven, eight minutes of a solid haunt, or I, I think we can yeah. get a good 30 minutes in there because we're going to have Ant, the conservative Ant. Um, Anthony Ramondi, for those of you who don't know who he is, go ahead and look him up on Instagram. He will be with us. He's also part of Bat Paranormal, so he comes over with us now. It's something that he wanted to do. So we're going to go ahead and bring him in, in the hard way, and we're going to start start early with him and see how his imagination runs with him. And we're going to get Jeff out on some of these stuff with us, too. Hey. I know we're always working different schedules. Jeff works like a madman. We're never – Brittany and I are never in the state that much right now. We're doing a lot of work. Oh, yeah. We have yeah. some cool stuff coming up, guys, at the end of the year. We'll get into that when we can, but we're traveling a lot. And so sometimes the Motley Crog show won't be um, aired. And, and I will notify, let you know that just because of our work schedule. And this is something that we did for the people and ourselves. So I try to maintain it as much as I can. And if I can record a pre-recorded show for a couple of the Thursdays that I'm going to be away for that week, I'll see if Jeff and I can get together one night and just really do a cool show. And we'll, and we'll try to release it. Then yeah, and sure. we'll try to squeeze Brittany in or something too. I'd like um, to just something. try to release it. Yeah. I'd like to do some some like um, some hikes to like some of the abandoned Florida spots too. Maybe yeah, make a video during yeah, the and then we can talk about that and go do it, and then get back and tell them what we found and what we thought. Yeah, I think that's great. Cool. Let's do something like that. So, thanks again, everybody, for joining us here on the Motley Croc Show. On behalf of myself, the me, the Manic Satanic, and Brittany, we um, we appreciate you. If you guys, me. got anything you want to say? I'll, I'll let you say it, and then we're gonna go ahead and sign out. Nope, I'm I'm good, man. I'm glad the world didn't end, so we get to hang out with y'all and. Um, yeah, that's all good. I love it. All right, yeah. guys. Again, thanks for coming out. We appreciate you. And thanks for all your support. The ones that are always with us. We love you. And we look forward to seeing you when we can. So have a great night, folks.